Hey guys, welcome back to Fairforged Hobbies. I just realized I haven't used my 3D printer in a while. So I decided to make something with my 3D printer and share the process with you guys. I remember I had one interesting artifact saved somewhere in my files a while ago. So I had to go dig it up and I found it. It's the claw of an owl bear. Or if you like Warcraft, this could be the claw of a moonkin. An artifact so powerful it could help control the power of the moon. First and foremost, I originally got this STL file from Thingiverse. If you search Thingiverse for Owl Bear Claw, you can easily find this thingy. It was made by Evan Characters from AC3D Design. This is it. Let's go make one of these. I loaded up the files in my Ultimaker Cura. I right away thought they're kinda small for an owl bear or a moonkin. So I decided to increase the size by 50%. And of course then I had to move them around just a little bit, rotate, adjust the position, so that they fit nicely on the building plate. Let's set the quality to 0.12 mm. This setting results in some finer details. Slice and dice. And what do we got here? Four and a half hours, not bad. And just a few clips of the thing being printed. No worries, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole four and a half hours of this. Let's skip right to the end. And here it is, my precious. I ended up with uh, two pieces that look like this. I think that's a decent size. So let's put them together. Before gluing the two pieces, I put them together and traced out the convexities on the joints in places where it would be hard to get to if the pieces were already assembled. This was mostly on the underside of the claw. And here I am trimming off the traced out edges with my X-Acto knife. Try not to trim off too much or there will be larger holes to fill later, thus requiring more effort. We don't want that. Now let's glue the two pieces together. Make sure to apply the glue evenly and not too much, so there would be no excess glue over pouring from the joints later. You must put the two pieces together precisely, so take your time, don't rush this step, make sure the edges of both pieces are in place. Once the claw was assembled, I used a piece of a sandpaper to take off any excess filament left by the printer's nozzle, as well as to smooth out the edge of the joint. I decided to use milliput to fill in all the gaps and to overall smooth out the surface. Mix the two parts together until you end up with a uniform substance. I used plenty of water to get the substance to a more liquid state, thinking it would help it get into all the tiny gaps. You can also use some paper towel to help wipe off the excess milliput. The next day, when milliput dried and hardened, I took my claw outside to get it primed. To be honest, I did not like how some spots turned out, especially the under the claw. It looked like milliput shrunk when it got dry. I kinda spaced out for a few minutes, thinking what to do next, 
But then I decided to go ahead with the priming, see what the primed version looks like, and then make up my mind on what to do next. Here's the primer that I used. It's made by Rust Oleum. I'll link to it and some other materials in the description below. So just regular priming, not too close, not too far, smooth flowing motion, better cover less surface, then soak the whole thing in it. <laughs> Speaking from personal experience, by the way. It's been a few hours, the primer is dry, let's get to painting. My three paints of choice. Actually, before the painting, I had to jump online and browse some pictures of what the bear's claw and an owl's talon look like. Once I had an idea, I came up with the color scheme that I wanted to use. One notable thing is that I decided to base paint the claw in a lighter brown color and then dry brush it with darker colors. Which is the opposite of how the dry brushing is usually done, unless you're painting like a fire or a glow effect, but that's a whole other topic of its own. Anyways, back to the claw. Pretty standard dry brushing here, nothing really special. Using a bigger brush will save you some time, but then just watch out to not get any of this dark paint on the bone part. I like how the area under the claw came out, the place I was most worried about. And my color choice for the bone part. I chose a finer brush for the base coat job. I had to paint the already painted area, which is probably the most difficult part of this step. Again, it's a very standard dry brushing going from the dark base coat to the most light final coat. This part needed to look like a bone, so I made the base coat yellowish, ivory color of the middle layers, and a white final layer, just a gentle touch up of the highest points. And for the sake of a better contrast, I decided to outline where the two areas meet. Of course, I then had to touch up some of my sloppiness. Eh, we all do that now and then. <laughs> and as a final touch, there was this crack that I wanted to address with some darker grey paint. I figured this piece might get touched more often than not, so some sealant wouldn't hurt. I used the rust -Oleum product again, which I'll link below. That's it! Here's what I got in the end. I really like how this piece turned out. Honestly, I was worried about the milliput shrinking, but that got fixed by the paint job. And the best part is that I enjoyed working on this a lot. A few final words of caution. When playing with this, be careful not to get struck by a moonbeam. Okay, well, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a few lines in the comments below. Okay, have a good one. Cheers.